Tonight, this Mass, we honor Saint Joseph. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. That we may celebrate these sacred mysteries, we call to mind our sins. I confess. And to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words. Through my fault, through my most grievous fault. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We'll do a double collect. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that by St. Joseph's intercession, your church may constantly watch over the unfolding of the mysteries of human salvation whose beginning you entrusted to his faithful care through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. O God, author of every mercy and all goodness, who in fasting prayer and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, look graciously on the confession of our lowliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. We'll be doing the Sunday readings. I am sent me to you. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. Leading the flock across the desert, he came to Horeb, the mountain of God, there, an angel of the Lord appeared to Moses in fire, flaming out of a bush. As he looked on, he was surprised to see that the bush, though on fire, was not consumed. So Moses decided, I must go over to look at this remarkable sight and see why the bush is not burned. When the Lord saw him coming over to look at it more closely, God called out to him from the bush, Moses, Moses. He answered, here I am. God said, come no nearer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. I am the God of your fathers, he continued. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. But the Lord said, I have witnessed the affliction of my people in Egypt, and have heard their cry of complaint against their slave drivers. So I know well what they are suffering. Therefore, I have come down to rescue them from the hands of the Egyptians and lead them out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. Moses said to God, but when I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you, if they ask me, what is his name? What am I to tell them? God replied, I am who am. Then he added, this is what you shall tell the Israelites. I am sent me to you. God spoke further to Moses. Thus shall you say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever. Thus am I to be remembered through all generations. The word of the Lord.
The life of the people with Moses in the desert was written down as a warning to us. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea. And all of them were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. All ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from a spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was the Christ. Yet God was not pleased with most of them, for they were struck down in the desert. These things happened as examples for us, so that we might not desire evil things as they did. Do not grumble as some of them did, and suffer death by the destroyer. These things happen to them as an example, and they have been written down as a warning to us, upon whom the end of the ages has come. Therefore, whoever thinks he is standing secure should take care not to fall. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Some people told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with the blood of their sacrifices. Jesus said to them in reply, do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way that they are greater sinners than all other Galileans? By no means. But I tell you, if you do not repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 people who were killed when the tower at Siloam fell on them, do you think they were more guilty than everyone else who lived in Jerusalem? By no means. But I tell you, if you do not repent, you will all perish as they did. Then he told them this parable. There once was a person who had a fig tree planted in his orchard. And when he came in search of fruit on it, but found none, he said to the gardener, for three years now I have come in search of fruit on this fig tree, 
but I have found none. So cut it down. Why should it exhaust the soil? He said to him in reply, Sir, leave it for this year also, and I shall cultivate the ground around it and fertilize it, that it may bear fruit in the future. If, you, if not, you can cut it down. The Gospel of the Lord. You might have heard this story before, and I've told it enough. And that's the danger of having an older priest. You've got to listen to his stories a couple of times. When I was a little kid, there was a bush on our property. My parents just bought their brand new house. They weren't renters anymore. So I saw this bush, and I decided I had to cut off the flower. So I went out there, and boom, off it came. It was a hydrangea. Brought it into my mother and she took it in silence. I go, something's wrong here. <laughs> my father came home from work, tossed his keys on the table. He saw the, he saw the flower. Obviously, he had seen that days before I did. And he ran out to the side of the house and looked at the bush. And he ran into me. He says, what did you do? What did you do? I says, I cut the flower for Ma. He goes, it was the only flower. I go, yeah. <laughs> he knew he wasn't going to win. He looked at me and says, don't touch that bush again. All right. So next year, my father reminded me of my pledge, don't touch the bush, and I didn't. No flowers. Second year, no flowers. Then I decided, well, I'm going to ask some of these older guys in the neighborhood. They'll have the answer. They're all avid gardeners and homeowners. So first I went next door to Murray Kaiserman. I says, the Jewish gardener will know what to do. <laughs> I says, Murray, you got to help me. So Murray looked at it because it faced his house, and he goes, I got the answer. Don't worry. So he did what he had to do. Nothing. Then I went up across the hill to Vito. Vito was an Italian. I says, well, maybe the Italians got the answer on this. I says, Vito, I did this. He goes, you shouldn't have done that. He said, I'll come down and look at it. And he did whatever he had to the bush. He goes, you'll get flowers this year. Nothing. So the Protestants, I went across the street to the Protestants. <laughs> Charlie came over. He says, you should have come to me first. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> that bush never flowered again till after my father died. <laughs> and strangely enough, every year he'd say to me as a teenager, hey, Mark, How's the bush? I go, Dad, this is the year, this is the year, this is the year. And he'd say, cut it down. No, no, no. He'd say, cut it down. And this went on year after year until he died. And the day we got back from the cemetery, it was in full blossom. You could solid blue. You know, I say, Moses got the burning bush. I got the hydrangea bush. <laughs> True story. You can't make this stuff up. Why do I tell you that crazy story? Well, today we're almost at the midpoint of Lent. Not quite. But the Gospels and the Epistle are all telling us that we shouldn't judge uh, and that repentance is absolutely necessary. You know, in the Gospels, Jesus has the encounter with the fig tree. And in all three synoptics, the encounter with the tree gets worse and worse and worse. Uh, in one Gospel, uh, our Lord 
in Luke here, it's kind of benign. He, uh, the Lord lets, in the parable, the Lord allows the the guy to fertilize it, to take care of it, to call Murray and Vito and Charlie. Do what you have to do. So Jesus was content to let the bush progress to see if it would bear fruit. In Mark, our Lord curses the fig tree and the next day it's shattered. That's the end of it. And I think it's in Matthew that our Lord goes like that to the fig tree and it just falls apart like Charlie Brown's bush. Everything come right off it. Our Lord encourages us to bear the good fruit of repentance. You got to prune. You know, Jesus, we have that beautiful parable to allow ourselves to be pruned that we might bear good fruit. And so today, this lesson here is for us to do that. Why does Luke come up with these couple of little quotes about the Tower of Siloam and the Galileans? It's, it's kind of, makes it kind of current, but there was the feeling that, well, that's because they were bad people. That's what happens to them. And so our Lord, is, there's, uh, there's a note here also that I should be bringing out for the Galileans and the people of Siloam is that we can't presume that we're going to have tomorrow to receive God's forgiveness, that we have to seek it now. And so that's the real lesson behind this is to, to seek God's forgiveness sooner than later and not to presume it uh, to be there. Jesus identified himself as I am. What's the name of the Lord? I am. We, we, we as Christians and Catholics say I am quite freely, but it was a name that had power. And it's in that name, that, you know, in the name of Jesus and God that we have this forgiveness. Jesus said I am and that you might know that I have the power to forgive sin. I am. So Jesus refers himself by many I am titles, and on occasion just simply I am in connection with the forgiveness of sins. So tonight we do celebrate that forgiveness in our life, the access that we have to the sacrament, and also the uh, obligation upon all of us to allow Jesus to prune us. Uh, you know, the Lord walked by the fig tree and he came back the next day. So as the Lord returns to us the next day, let him find us with hearts that are repentant. Uh, haven't had an aunt that was an sister of St. Joseph. She was 102. Uh, and we're fortunate in Framingham that we have the Bethany here. Uh, we Let us now uh, say a Hail Mary for all the sisters at, uh, Ma, at uh, Bethany. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Let's do the vocation chalice. Gary and Jacqueline St. Helier. Each day, I present this chalice to you and commission you to pray for vocations to the priesthood, religious life, and consecrated lay life. We join our prayers to yours that the Lord will raise up many holy and dedicated men and women to the priesthood, religious life, and consecrated lay life from this parish. May those whom God has called always have the freedom and insight to hear his call, the courage to respond to it, and the support of this parish community to follow him. 
Holy Mother of the Good Shepherd, turn your motherly care to the Archdiocese of Boston. Intercede for us to the Lord of the Harvest to send more laborers to the harvest. Inspire vocations in our time. Let the word of your Son be made flesh anew in the lives of persons anxious to proclaim the good news of everlasting life. Draw the near to the heart of your Son so they can understand the beauty and the joy that awaits them when the Lord Jesus calls them to be his witnesses. Amen. Let us stand for the best our faith. The Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he arose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father, the Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Today, the second collection is for the support of parish properties and buildings. Our offertory is number 438, O oh God, You Search Me, number 438. praises is in our hearts and is our sacrifice that these become gifts acceptable to God the Father of the Almighty. Be pleased, Lord, with these sacrificial offerings. Grant that we who beseech pardon for our sins may take care to forgive one another through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God. You have given your children a sacred season for the renewing and the purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may deal with the things of this passing world and hold fast to the things that eternally endure. 
And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory. <laughs> fountain of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like they do fall, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and the eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The history of faith. celebrate the memorial of his death and his resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life in this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, especially the Ukraine. Bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Sean, our Bishop, and all the clergy and the religious. Remember our brothers and our sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co to eternal life, that we may praise you and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. <laughs> At the 
Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Grant us peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, we may be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Lord, look not on our sins, but upon the faith of your church. Grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Peace be with all of you. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
some announcements. Next weekend, we will take up that special collection for the Ukraine relief. It'll be sent to Catholic Relief Services, but please make out the check to St. Bridget's Parish. Stations is across uh, Friday nights here in the Upper Church and Friday nights at 7.30. The Catholic Appeal is well underway. If you have not done so yet, please consider making a donation. If you got an envelope from the diocese, don't use it. Use ours, okay? Uh, that way we get a little more credit on it. So let us stand for our prayers. Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be a safeguard against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Go forth in peace. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. The recession was number 121, led by the Spirit, number 121.